Welcome back to The Burn Podcast, hosted by Ben Newman. My name is Tyler, and I'm the producer here for the show, and every once in a while, you're going to hear my voice as we continue to grow and build the show. This week, we wanted to bring you a very special episode. In our uncommon live group coaching sessions, we've been working with our members to help them understand what their standard is in life and how to build an environment around that standard. This episode is a small segment from one of Ben's most recent keynotes, where he talks about the four P's of the standard and creating an environment in your life to help you live to those standards. Now let's get into this week's episode of The Burn. You gotta ask yourself, who's gonna help me get there? What's my accountability? What are the changes to my environment? And then I would just encourage you to take this, you can have it, and make it part of how you live every day. And right in the middle, this is the standard. So nobody's ever told you what the standard is until now. So once you identify what it is that you need to do on a daily basis, how to do it, how to drive revenue, how to limit your expenses, how to do things the right way in your business, Then you wake up every day and you recognize there's four P's, the problem, the planning, the performance, and the payoff. The problem, the planning, the performance, and the payoff. And some of you might be wondering, why would the first P be the problem? Because most people aren't having the honest conversation with you. You see, one of the biggest problems is actually what's going so well. Tim, in all the years you've been doing this, decades of doing this, How often do you see people who are winning at a high level stop doing what they need to do? This is why you and I align, just like Coach Saban. Coach Saban kept me around, and Tim said, this is it, you're coming to speak at this conference. And I said, well, because of you and your passions and how you do things, I will accept the invitation, I can't wait. This was like six months ago. Make me wait all this time. Because it's a problem when many of you win because you choose to stop doing the things that cause you to win. That's a problem. And so that's why my favorite questions is how do you show up after you win? So the problem might actually be that you have an old pattern of behavior that when you win, you stop doing what you're supposed to do. So you have to be honest with yourself and capture that and say, if that's a problem for me, then I need to plan out every single day and I need to know what are my action steps today? And once you identify what those simple action steps are today, you already wrote down one of them. Then the performance is the choice. You either do it or you don't do it. You either do it or you don't do it. And then you have a payoff. When you do what you say you're going to do and you do it the right way, you win. How do I know? Because all of you have already had your best month ever. So all we have to do is go back to that best month ever reverse engineer the behaviors that cause you to have the best month ever, go back to doing those things, and then watch, you'll have a new best month ever. Because those of you that are doing $100,000 a month, guess what? Your best month ever was the 10,000 that some of you are having right now that's your best month ever. So you have to see beyond the 10,000 to the example that's in this room, to the 100,000, and say, that can be me if I don't allow my winning to be my problem. And then some of you, you're just being held back from these unnecessary skyscrapers we build in our imagination because of fear, doubt, and uncertainty. So I'm not going to plan correctly because I'm looking at the world as if there's all these problems. And I just encourage you, like I said, I go as tough as this is on the eyes. I go back to my mother coming to the dining room table with an IV stand to ask me how my day was at school. And that's my perspective. Can I really have a bad day? And so when you think about the pain and the challenge you've been through, remember, I'm not the only one that has a story. Each and every single one of you has a story. When you think of that pain and that challenge and adversity, you fight through it because it's your perspective. Stop allowing these minor issues to prevent you from actually planning your day regardless of how you feel, doing what you just wrote down on paper plus the other three or four things that you have to do every day. And then the performance piece, when you write them down, if you know it's gonna move you away from the problem and cause you to get the result that you want, which is the result that actually gives you those best months ever, then follow through with the performance, enjoy the payoff, and then we're back right here to the seduction of success. 
Do not be seduced by success when it happens. Don't allow the seduction of success to be a problem. Don't allow your success to be a problem. Allow yourself to choose to continue to win after you win. I'm going to give you a piece of psychology. See, once we understand this, okay, we understand the burn. Why and purpose is not enough. If you're listening to the coaches that say why and purpose is everything, they're wrong. I'm going to just say it again, very humbly. I've been doing this for 18 years. Coaches who tell you why and purpose is enough, they are wrong. It's very important. But if you don't understand the burn, that underlying fire, the real deep-rooted reason why you will not waste a day, you will never ignite your why and purpose the way it can be ignited. And when you connect to that burn and you ignite it, that's when you attack and your discipline will cause you to win. So it starts with the burn. Change your environment. Real quick side note, Ed Milet, dear friend of mine, when Ed Milet had me on his podcast, I didn't realize he was going to ask me this. He said, Ben, I want you to talk to them about your alarm. I said, Ed Milet, what do you mean? He goes, well, you name your alarm. He goes, I didn't know you could name your alarm until you, you told me during a conversation you could name your alarm. So my alarm on my phone is actually titled Janet Fishman Newman Legacy. So I keep my phone in the bathroom because how many of you keep your phone right next to your bed so that you can conveniently hit the snooze button three times? I mean, are you serious? You're supposed to be leading other people and you build environments to live to your feelings. Stop the behavior. You have to scrutinize your behavior and scrutinize your environment in order to win at a higher level. So I said, look, I can't have it right here because I'm naturally inclined to hit the snooze button. So now I get up out of bed. My wife will kill me if I don't turn it off. So I got a little light jog, kind of like the Jalen jog in the weight room, right? Little Jalen jog to the bathroom. And then what's the first thing I see in the morning? Janet Fishman Newman. Mike, I'm not going back to bed, am I? The moment I see my mother's name, that's it. How am I going to look at my mother's name knowing that she was dying before my eyes as a seven-year-old boy and I'm going to go back to bed. Not happening. I've created an environment where I will not lose that battle. 